Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. The U.S. sailors are known to be the most skilled people in their field. Their reputation is not a coincidence, but the result of years of training at cutting-edge facilities, which allows them to perform complex technical operations perfectly. In operations such as UNREP, sailors carefully transfer fuel and supplies between moving ships to extend fleet endurance. They also engage in live fire exercises to sharpen combat readiness in support of national interest. To ensure that all the newest systems are operated precisely, the United States has established many training centers, each specializing in a specific domain. One of the largest warfare centers, the Naval Surface Warfare Center, is part of the Naval Sea Systems Command. NAVC for short. The center is responsible for providing innovative, reliable and cost-effective technical solutions for today's and tomorrow's naval technologies. It specializes in research, engineering, development, testing and evaluating naval surface ship systems. The NSWC's work spans a range of areas, including weapon systems, sensors, shipboard systems, and combat systems integration. There are eight divisions within the Naval Surface Warfare Center, Carderock, Corona, Crane, Dahlgren, Indian Head, Panama City, Philadelphia, and Port Hunami. The Naval Surface Warfare Center, Port Hunami, is home to the most advanced on rep test site, Operational since 1963, this facility has long provided engineering services to enable various Navy ships to stay underway indefinitely. At this site, expert engineers constantly test new systems, equipment and configurations to provide reliable solutions for both supply ships and receiving vessels prior to fleet introduction. From transmission systems to fuel probes, every component of the UNREP system is thoroughly tested according to Navy standards. As a training center, the UNREP test site trains sailors and civilians to operate and maintain UNREP systems installed on their ships. Students first learn the process in the classroom before they go into action and simulate the operation. Another test facility within the Port Hunami Division is the Self-Defense Test Ship Operations, commonly known as SDTS. SDTS is the only active self-defense test ship and the U.S. Navy's only active decommissioned warship, now equipped with modern technologies and weapon systems. Formerly known as USS Paul F. Foster, the ship was repurposed in 2006 to provide the most realistic at-sea live-fire combat scenarios for testing innovations and weapon systems. Thanks to its innovative design, the SDTS can operate fully manned or unmanned remote control mode, depending on the needs. In Building 1392 on the campus of the Naval Surface Warfare Center, we find the Mission Package Support Facility, or MPSF. 
This site is a critical component of the U.S. Navy's support infrastructure for littoral combat ships. MPSF staff provides comprehensive maintenance, testing, and logistics support for mission packages, which are modular systems that can be rapidly installed or removed to tailor LCS capabilities for specific missions. These mission packages include systems for surface warfare, mine countermeasures, and anti-submarine warfare. Personnel at this facility ensure all mission modules are kept in optimal condition, enabling quick deployment, seamless integration, and removal. Port Hunami also incorporates an innovation lab named Fathomworks. It's a unique collaboration hub, distinct in its public-private partnership model. The Octopus Represented Center focuses on technological innovation by leveraging expertise from and for the Navy, academia, and industry. The lab features state-of-the-art equipment that enables staff to transform ideas into real prototypes, including an above-ground pool, additive manufacturing, material testing, milling and metalwork, woodworking, miscellaneous tools, a drone cage, and collaboration space. Fathomworks is also equipped with mixed reality lab space, VR, AR, and 3D features, enabling sailors to immerse and train on various systems. Carter Rock Division, on the other hand, focuses its missions on advancing naval architecture and marine engineering. This division specializes in ship design, hydrodynamics, material science, and structural mechanics. Several facilities support this purpose. The Unmanned Aerial Systems Laboratory, for instance, is home to prominent researchers and technicians who are aiming to develop UAS for Carter Rock's maritime mobility missions. The staff in this laboratory design, test, and evaluate drones, from launch and recovery to swarming and teaming capabilities. These simulations might be performed at the Maneuvering and Seakeeping Basin in the same division. One of the largest indoor ocean testing facilities, the MASC is fully dedicated to designing, testing, and evaluating the seaworthiness of the U.S. Navy's newest ships. The basin allows engineers and scientists to conduct detailed experiments on how ships, submarines, and unmanned systems handle various sea conditions. Equipped with 216 individually controlled electromechanical waveboards, the mask can mimic any real ocean conditions. By observing the ship model behavior and analyzing the data collected during the tests, experts at the mask would fully understand the ship's performance in real life. Tasks typically include assessing the ship's stability, maneuverability, resistance, and propulsion performance under various sea states. The warfare solutions installed on these naval ships also undertake severe testing. The key facility to these tests is the NSWC Crane Division, the third largest naval surface warfare center in the world by geographic area sprawling over 100 square miles in southern Indiana. Established in 1941, its primary mission has evolved from ammunition and ordnance during World War II to becoming a hub for advanced research, development, and support for U.S. Navy warfare.
NSWC Crane aims to enhance the nation's defense capabilities by advancing three missions, electronic warfare, radar technologies, and strategic systems. Another division of the NSWC is the Panama City Division, which specializes in conducting research, development, test and evaluation, and in-service support in mine warfare. Naval Special Warfare, Diving and Life Support, and Amphibious and Expeditionary Maneuver Warfare Systems. The center has recently accepted the delivery of the new Landing Craft Air Cushion 107 after completing acceptance trials with the Navy's Board of Inspection and Survey. The new generation has proven it's ready and capable of handling ship-to-shore operations efficiently. With a hull design and configurations that closely resemble its predecessor, this modern landing craft is fully compatible with the current well-decked amphibious ships, ensuring rapid integration within the fleet. Naval Surface Warfare Center also aims to enhance combat capabilities by developing state-of-the-art weapons. 4,700 people at Dahlgren Division work diligently to provide the U.S. Navy with unmatched surface combat systems, weapon systems, and ordnance. The electromagnetic railgun is one of these innovative solutions. Unlike traditional firearms, railguns use electromagnetic force to launch projectiles at incredibly high speeds, exercising conventional guns. The testing of such a powerful weapon involves meticulous planning and execution. The electromagnetic railgun is mounted on a test platform, where it undergoes a series of preliminary checks, electrical and mechanical assessments, power supply checks, and data recording setups. Once everything was in place, the electromagnetic railgun fired its very first shots at Dahlgren's new terminal range. High electrical currents create magnetic fields that accelerate a sliding metal conductor or armature between two rails to launch projectiles at 4,500 to 5,600 miles per hour. High-speed cameras and sensors capture every detail of the projectile's flight, providing valuable data for analysis. This data is crucial for understanding the weapon's performance and making necessary adjustments. Destroyers stand as the only ships capable of accommodating these powerful weapons. These versatile warships are designed to handle a variety of missions, from anti-aircraft and anti-submarine warfare to surface combat. Destroyers' integrated power systems and sophisticated combat management systems enable the integration and control of the railgun's targeting and firing mechanisms. Additionally, their strong structural integrity can handle the immense stresses and vibrations generated by the railgun during firing. By investing in advanced training and cutting-edge technology, the U.S. Navy ensures that its sailors are prepared to meet any challenge, any time, and anywhere.
That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.